Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'm working with you step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets and you can download those in US letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. There's also a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can access information about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and hints on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time on exam day when you're actually working through your exam paper. So if you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find it all there. If you can give me a like, that would be super, and please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. I have lots more in the pipeline. And so now we're going to complete this sample paper. This is a, a free, a freely available paper. You can download this from the ABRSM website, and you can also find the link to that in the description below. And this is just um, an example of how the newly revised exam papers are going to look. And so let's turn to page four and we'll complete the last question of that. Find the page, there we go. And so we've got all the questions on this page. They're all going to be relating back to this little extract here and so this is just pulling together all sorts of things that you've done throughout the music theory in practice workbook and we're now going to apply it to a real piece of music here this is where it gets interesting because we can see how music theory helps you to get behind all the nuts and bolts of what's going on in a composer's mind and just learning to analyze and describe what we see and what we play so then Let's get going. I hope you've had a go of this on your own, first of all. It's better to learn through your mistakes. If you've made a mistake, it doesn't matter. You can just rub it out and have another go. So we'll check these through together now. First job is we're asked to draw a circle around two notes next to each other that are tied together. So although this is the symbol for a tie, we've got to be care that, careful that it, we find it in the correct application. So it's a tie and not a slur, which is the same shape. So for example, here in bar four, that won't be correct because that's a slur joining two different notes together, meaning to play them smooth and connected. Same here, that's a slur, not a tie, so is this. However, here, this is a tie because it's a note head to next door note head, both of the same pitch, and so we're combining those note values together to make the note last longer. So that's the one that we need to circle. Now just a little bit of uh, observation really, we need to say which bar has the same notes and rhythm as bar 4, so let's see which bar looks the same just at a glance, so if you're glancing through and actually almost directly underneath you can see bar 8 has exactly the same notes and rhythm, so we can say quite easily bar 8. So a bit of description now, we need to give the time name of the longest note in the melody. So right at the very beginning actually is our longest note, that's worth two beats. This one here is only worth one and a half even though it's tied. This is the longest so we could either say minim or if you prefer the alternative terms you could say half note. So getting through this quite quickly. So the, this melody is in the key of F major, very generous in telling us that. Now we need to give the number of a bar that contains all the notes of the tonic triad. And so first of all, before we go looking to find it, we need to be sure what we're actually looking for. And if you remember, the tonic triad is built of the first, the third, and the fifth degrees of the scale. So if we're in F major, F is the first and then the third, if you're not happy just skipping through that in your mind, if you just use a piano keyboard or visualise a piano keyboard, you could always just sketch it out. You've got the first, second, third is A, C, so F, A, C. So we're looking F, G, A, B, C. 
So we need to find a bar that's got those notes in it, all of those notes. Now they may not actually be in that um, order. So we've got an A and an F but no C. We've got an A and a C but no F. We need all of them. So we've got a C. Remember we're in the bass class so be careful. An F and an A. There is a G but at least it contains all the notes of the tonic triad which is all that we're required to find. So bar three will answer that. And actually almost directly underneath you can see that bar seven has those same notes. So you could also have said bar seven. Either one of those answers is fine. So now we're looking for the interval of a fifth. We've got to draw a bracket over two notes next to each other that are a fifth apart. Now uh, you're not exactly looking for a needle in a haystack. When you're looking for a fifth it tends to go, uh, well it does go first, third, fifth, line, line, line or first, third, fifth, space, space, space. So you're looking for a space skipping to the next but one space or a line skipping to the next door but one line. So here that won't do because that's only one line, one, two, three. These are all going up in step, line, space, line, space. Exactly the same. So let's see what happens here. We've got line, 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 one, two, three, four, five. There is our interval of a fifth. And as we already know that bar seven is also the same, you could also have chosen that as your option. Both of those are um, the intervals of a fifth. So that's that completed. And so now, um, this next part of the question really is the easiest 10 marks you can hope for because all we are doing is copying. We're copying from the start of the melody to the second note of bar five. So be very careful that you copy exactly what they've asked. So we're only going to the second note of bar five. So if you want to, you can just pop yourself a little reminder there to stop there. We can always rub that out afterwards. Uh, they tell us even what to watch out for. Don't forget the clef, the key signature, the time signature, the tempo marking, the dynamics and all other details. Basically anything you see you copy and um, don't forget at the start of the paper it told us that marks may be lost if our answer isn't neat and clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just map out my bar lines to match theirs so that I'm not going to get lost and then I can just keep everything nicely aligned with theirs and then also I know I'm not going to um, first of all lose my place and also I'm not going to run out of space so we're going to stop here if it helps you by all means you could even just sketch bar one two three four five by all means do whatever you need to so we need the clef the key signature the time signature the tempo marking so let's do a bit of revision here andante means at a walking pace lento is slow so i suppose you would combine that to say at a slow walking pace Let's just make use of all of the opportunities available to us for a bit of revision. So now it doesn't really matter what order you do things in. Just so long as you get everything completely and accurately down. I prefer just doing the blobs first. As a rule, don't know why. Just uh, That way I know I'm sort of in the right place. And then I can worry about getting my lines nice and tidy once I know I've got everything mapped out. So I'm just getting the, the blobs in the right place really. I'm putting some dots but you can do this in any order. It's 10 marks almost for free. So now I'll pop the stems in. By all means use a ruler if you feel you need to. The most important thing is don't be sketchy about it. We don't want lots of sketchy lines, just one line, job done. That needs a little stamp. 
and then we've got a crotchet and a quaver and we're going to the second note of bar five that's it so I'm just going to rub that out now so let's have the tempo marking now now I know where I've got my space because I didn't want to put it too low and get in the way of my note heads so andante lento dynamic marking piano and now we just need to make sure if there's any bits of articulation so really there's just that slur there I think and I think that's it yeah so there's a nice easy 10 marks for you at the end of your paper I do hope that's been helpful to you that's the end of that sample paper I do suggest you go back and make use of um, lots of the other previous year's paper even though the format is different it's still a valuable resource for revision if you can give me a like that would be super please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated I hope that that's helped you lots please do also visit SharonBale.com and make use of all of the resource that's available to help you there Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.